in AI development, there are a lot of techniques that sound fancy for training and fine tuning models. Uh, some of them that are the most popular today are things like fully sharded uh, model parallelism and then pipeline parallelism. And uh, I wanted to teach these techniques uh, in a very intuitive way for a long time. So I recently got a, a, a Vision Pro and uh, my thoughts are that uh, in 3D and in kind of AR, you'll be able to actually understand it more fundamentally. So this is an experiment, but uh, you know, if you guys like it, let me know, I'll do more of these. But I just wanted to take it out of 2D and kind of build more intuition for you around how to think about uh, distribution, how machine speeds matter, when to think about interconnects or not, and um, just to kind of visually understand what's happening under the hood. Uh, hope so you I enjoy. want to explain to you how sharding works and, and just kind of logically how to think about how distribution is happening on different machines. So let's say I have two different machines here. So I have machine one, and then I have machine two here. And each machine has GPUs on it. So let's say there are two GPUs here and two GPUs, right? So one machine, two GPUs, one machine, two GPUs. In total, you have four GPUs. Now, let's not deal with this for a second. Let's take a model and we have, um, let's say a transformer, for example, has different blocks, right? So kind of what I showed you is that you can think about it like this, right? So this is one block here and then another block here. So this would be like the model, this whole thing. And then you'll have words coming in, right? Your tokens here. So you have tokens kind of here floating around. They get embedded and these embeddings then go into the model, right? The embeddings are vectors. And then they go into the model and then they kind of do what we call a forward pass. So they go through and they get multiplied, multiplied, multiplied. Some loss function is calculated here and then you get a backward pass. It goes back through the model, right? And updates the weights as that happens. Now, these matrices, they're gonna be usually matrices. Um, they can take up a lot of memory, right? So we've devised a lot of ways to basically not have to have them all in memory. Um, probably before 2021, 2022, most of these things just fit into one machine, right? Or one GPU. And, um, and as models have gotten bigger, we've had to get creative about how we do that. So fully sharded, what it basically means is that it takes these two layers here, for example, and, and what it does is it will split them. So it'll take like, in this case, I have two GPUs, right? So it'll take half of one layer, put it on one GPU and the other half and put it on the other GPU and same for these, right? So concretely, it looks something like this, right? So I'll have half of this and then half of this here. So now I, I actually do have the full model, like the full layer here, right? But the parameters are actually full here. So they're in memory. And half of that layer or block um, on this GPU does not have any memory, but on this one, it has a second half. So if you were to assemble these together, you have all the, all the weights together, right? But what this means is that this extra memory here um, that's free, I can use for other stuff like more batches, bigger batches, um, more blocks, more parameters, and so on, right? So, so this is one block, so this is sharded, right? If I have four GPUs, then I would have 25% of parameters in one, 25 in another, and so on, right? But here I just have the two GPUs. Now, um, I'm gonna draw the other layer as well, right? So we have two blocks here. And in this one, only half the parameters are present as well. Okay, so two blocks, this is my model. This whole thing constitutes the model, embeddings go through here, they activate and so on. So what happens, well, you, you clearly need all the weights to do a forward pass, right? Obviously, I'm not gonna zero out most things. So you have to assemble this, so that's what happens. Basically, as the, the, the thing goes forward, right, then uh, what you do is you kind of joint all these parameters, right? So uh, at this step, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like one time step here, right? So I have my, yeah, so I have my model here, right? And again, they're kind of split, so I'm, I'm just copying what this is here. And I have the parameters filled in here, 
and filled in here, but these are empty, right? So again, just a copy of this one layer. Then in that forward pass, when it goes through, it's actually going to fill in, it's going to transfer the weights from across and actually make this full matrix happen. Um, and so this is going to take up memory, right? Uh, these other ones are not going to be full. They're going to be just at half, right? Or sharded, you know, by N, N being the number of devices that you have, GPUs. So your upper bound in memory becomes the total number of kind of half parameters throughout the model. And then uh, the, your largest layer or block when all the parameters are filled up, right? Plus your batch size, plus your... Um, uh, like your optimizers have states, you know, like learning rates, um, all the penalties and so on. So that, that, all that other stuff is there. So you can understand why having more GPUs is helpful because I can take, um, you know, let, let's concretely say like I have four GPUs, right? If I had four GPUs uh, like this, then I could take this model or this block and sharded, right? So I'm just gonna like represent it as one long thing. And basically I'm gonna have kind of like this quarter here on this one. Then I'm gonna have this quarter of parameters here. And then like this quarter of parameters on this one and so on, right? So I, I'm kind of breaking it up into four. So the more GPUs you have, the more and more you can kind of break this up and free up more and more memory which means you can actually have bigger and bigger models because you can fit more parameters in the models, right? So, so that's kind of the intuition. So obviously the connection between these GPUs is extremely important because every time I'm going forward, I'm syncing all the parameters back and forth. And so this is why interconnects are so important between machines, right? We'll get into two machines in a second, but within a GPU, this is extremely expensive. You have to send all the parameters across all the layers, right? And, and that's happening multiple times during a forward pass. So that's extremely costly. Now, um, when it comes to scaling across multiple nodes, there are a few strategies, right? So you can also shard across the nodes. So I can take this model here and basically how I did the four GPU situation here, I can do that across the two nodes, the two machines. And so that way I can take a very, so if you had a really large model that has like, I don't know, billions of parameters, I could take like 10, like if I had a thousand GPUs, I could take one one thousandth of that block, put it on each GPU and kind of split it up that way. So now you've got these machines that are coordinating, right? So let me just, uh, it's getting messy. So let me just draw two new machines here, right? I'm just gonna create a new one. Okay, so we're back here. So I'm gonna say we have the two machines again, and we have the two G, oops. Yeah, so we have the two GPUs here. No, it's not a great color. Okay. We have the two GPUs here, two GPUs here, right? So four GPUs. Uh, sorry, let me just clean this thing up real quick. Okay, so two machines, and then you've got these four GPUs. One, two, three, four, great. And now I'm gonna split my model across all four. Um, actually, I should have drawn it this way. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna take that one layer that I had, you know, something like this, this big layer. I'm going to break it up into fourths now, right? So I'm going to put um, part of it here, right? That's the one part, the second part of it here, the third part of it here, and then the fourth part. So together they assemble into one block, right? So I've sharded this now. And, um, and only these weights live here, right? And then only these weights live here and only these weights live here and so on. Okay, so let's clean this up a bit. And, um, and I just want to show you guys what happens across nodes, machines, right? So I'm going to draw one machine here. Oh my God, so buggy. Okay, one machine here and another machine here. And then we're going to have four GPUs, right? 
So you have this. So you have one GPU here, one GPU here, one GPU here, one GPU here. Now you've got four GPUs and they're across machines. In the real world, you have like 16 per machine and you have thousands of these machines. But I'm just trying to illustrate this concept, right? Now I have the one layer that I need to shard. So just think about it like one big layer like this that is split across all four GPUs, right? But only the parameters of each block. So here you only have like a quarter of these parameters and they live on this GPU. And then on this one, you have this other quarter, right? So I'm gonna say it's these guys here and they live here. And uh, clearly there's no like, like this is obviously poorly drawn, but you'd have the other quarter, which is not a quarter, but it'd be here and then the other quarter here. So this whole block gets split across all the four GPUs. So think about it logically for a second now, right? Why is it important to have fast interconnects? Like why should the machines have really, really high speed between them? Well, every time the model's going forward, remember the model goes forward this way, right? That was one block and then you have the second block over here. And so you're going kind of this way, you have the embeddings, the words, and they're coming in and they're going layer block one, block two, and continuing. Well, every single time I do, I move forward, I have to sync so many things. I have to send all of these parameters across all the machines and all the GPUs at the same time and then go to the next one, the next one, the next one. So this has to be extremely fast, right? So, so that's if you're using fully sharded. There are other strategies um, that we have as well that can actually get rid of this, right? So there, there's like a hybrid sharded, and, and I'll show that in the code, where you basically don't do this thing every single time. Instead, you kind of shard within a machine, and then at the end you sync, right? So let me show you what that looks like. So let's say I have two machines here, right? And then I have my two GPUs per machine. So I have GPU one, GPU two, GPU three, and GPU four. Okay, so these are the GPUs. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same block and I'm just gonna split it between the two within the machine. I'm not going out the machines, right? So this is block one and then this is block two. Again, only half the weights are on this one, half the weights are on this one and so on. Uh, I always joke, it's kind of like, you know, what's the difference between tiny models and, and like LLMs and large models? Like if you're frying a, like a steak on a pan, right? The steak can fit on the pan when it's a small model, but when it's a large model, you need like multiple pans and you have like this massive steak that has to be cooked across both, right? It's exactly what's happening here with the two GPUs. So now in this case, we're gonna do the hybrid strategy. What does that mean? I'm gonna take this model and copy it and replicate it exactly here. Right, so it's exactly the same that I have there. So let's see, yeah, here, block one and block two. This thing is buggy. So I've copied my model. Now I've got two independent copies. So these machines could be like different continents for all I care. So now what's gonna happen is I'm going to take my embeddings and on the forward pass, you're gonna go through the model and you're gonna calculate these gradients here, right? And same thing here. Now they're independent, so they're gonna use different batches of data. They're gonna go through and do this. And then at the very end, you're going to take these gradients that are here and you're going to sync them between each other and you average them, you bring them back, right? And then you do updates, you update everything, right? So now you do your backward pass and you've got information for both machines now and you can do this. So it's much faster because you're not going through every single kind of step forward instead you're doing it at the very end you're doing this kind of syncing right now the difference here is you're bounded by the size of this machine so your model must fit on that machine so if you've got an h100 with eight gpus or 16 and each one has 80 gigs then that's going to be the max that you can fit on that particular machine honestly that's good for most kind of um, fine-tuning applications today um, so that's probably even overkill for most things I think even pre-training smaller models you can do that with. But, you know, I just wanted to build some intuition around like why the connections are interesting and then how are people thinking about this, right? Like 
most of the research nowadays is around like how do you split these parameters you may have heard of something like cpu offloading where maybe even some of the optimizer states get put into cpu memory like the, the people try all sorts of things like should you keep things off should you bring things back there's something called um, par um, pipeline parallelism which sounds fancy but it's very straightforward i'll show you what i mean by that so uh, back to our two nodes here right Two machines, each one has, uh, where are you? All right, okay. You've got uh, two GPUs, and you've got two GPUs here. So remember that model that we had, and the model had two blocks, block one, block two. My model is two blocks. The data goes through here and kind of goes through the model. Well, in pipeline parallelism, instead of putting these two blocks on one machine, Right? What you do is you split them up. So you take one block, put it on this machine, and you take the next block and put it in this machine. So this model here gets split up across two different machines. And then you basically take your inputs, you run them through here, and then the outputs get sent to the next machine, and then you do backprop and so on. Now the problem here, obviously I want you to build intuition about this. The, the reason this is interesting is because when you go through, uh, you know, this transfer between machines is going to be expensive. Um, not as expensive as like sharing every single parameter all the time because you're just sending the activations here. But uh, in some other states, I assume, to like maintain the, the network state. But um, what's going to happen is that um, you're going to like this thing's going to sit idle while this thing is computing. And usually you're going to have like maybe 10 of these machines, right? So there's a lot of techniques around like, how do you keep this machine busy while this one's running? It's like an optimization problem, right? Like standard IUR optimization. And, um, and then, you know, I can imagine a whole field and a bunch of ideas where you're kind of tweaking which layers go where, how do you, how do you like move, move between them? And then, um, and then there probably will be things around like maybe clusters of machines acting as a layer, right? So let me show you what I mean by that. So in this case, let's, uh, Let's pretend we have four machines, right? And I'm gonna split them up like this. You could imagine thinking about these as a cluster, right? Where like this set of machines is one cluster and this set of machines is another cluster. So now this problem gets reduced down to like two machines in essence, right? So now you can basically do like fully sharded here across these machines, for example. And then this is like one block and then the activations go here and now you've got fully sharded here, but in, in between them, you're doing like pipeline parallelism, right? So it, within it's fully sharded, maybe a hybrid thing. And then, so anyways, it'll get crazy pretty soon. Um, and there'll be like a lot of weird techniques for people doing this. So, but I would just want you to build intuition around how these things are working and why it's important.